Great things are done by a series of small things brought together. Chapter 17. My quest nearly complete. Nice virus. Let's go. Nice virus. Within hours, we received signals from the robots from all over the rest of the planet. <laughs> Every one of them more than happy to discuss peace terms. I think this was the happiest time of my life. Within days, representatives of the surviving robots and humans from all over the world turned out to help organize the formal peace talks. Oh. At the headquarters of Small Yellow Robot. Mr. Hero! And the French Ambassador. Oh, emergency. Emergency. So, you have achieved peace, said the man in black. Well done. Well done indeed. The old lady was obviously surprised. I didn't realize you had survived. Where on earth are you? Would it surprise you, continued I wasn't the man in black, on Earth? if I told you we were in fact not on Earth, but I knew on it. the moon? Well, I didn't know we were all I of us. Interrupted Mr. Preston, secret space, black ops, bases on the moon. It's all true. Yes. Explained <laughs> the man in black. Yes. When the war was all but lost, as a precautionary measure, the great and the good strategically repositioned to the moon. And now we've saved the day, interrupted Heather. You want to come back and take all the glory? No, no, not at all, young lady. We would like you all to join us on the moon. We'll <laughs> send a shuttle. That way you can help us plan the new renaissance for the planet. Go to the moon? Just went to the moon! Once we were in the air, and the shuttle was on its automatic course. The pilot came back to the cabin to see how we were doing. Everyone agreed they were okay, although Mr. Preston was surprised that a secret government spaceship was, as he put it, a piece of junk. Watch your mouth, kid, or you'll find yourself floating home, said the pilot. Sorry, I always wanted to say that. Suddenly his expression changed as he was interrupted by a loud alarm. Everyone buckle up, he shouted as he ran back to the cockpit. A fuel line has ruptured, things are going to get a bit... Harry. Alright, I'm gonna go fix the ship. While Sim tried to explain the crash position to Heather, the old lady and everyone else. <laughs> Not that Mr. Logan <laughs> was listening as he jumped to his feet and attempted to extinguish a fire with his jacket. Barry, said Mr. Preston with a terrified look on his face, if we don't make it out of this, I want you to know something. I took the money. <laughs> Mr. Silton looked incredibly angry as Mr. Preston went on to explain how he had double-crossed their associates and taken the money from the post office robbery. What? Asked Mr. Silton. You told me you'd lost it. I told them we'd lost it. They beat you up trying to get it back. What did you even spend it on? Drugs, said Mr. Preston <laughs> with a shrug. This made Mr. Silton start to shout uncontrollably about the stolen money, and Mr. Preston being a thief, when, for some reason, Mr. Preston said, yeah, and you're a proper c**t, <laughs> which just made Mr. Silton even more angry. <laughs> it was soon obvious things were not going to get any better, so I ran to the cockpit. I could barely get out the words, can I help? 
before the pilot said, open the airlock, run along the wing to the underside, open panel 322, take the extinguisher and put the fires out. I was shocked how calm he was, but he just smiled and saluted. We're gonna go on the underside, so from the front. So I can see my house from up here. Oh, come on. I see my house film up here. Saved the shuttle. Ba bum ba bum. Ba 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 ba. Ba ba ba. Ba 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 We're at the moon Nice landing, Captain. Very nice landing. <laughs> They're smiling. No runway. It's a good captain. Whoa. Made it. After everyone had regained their composure, and I was sure we were safe, I suddenly became aware that we were actually on the moon. It was as amazing as you would imagine. Everyone had to wear special suits due to the lack of oxygen. But, not needing to breathe, I was fine without one. Heather took lots of photos and even set up a tripod to get one of everyone with the Earth behind us. The... That's a very nice picture. Soon though, the pilot explained that we had crashed just outside of the base. 
and, as his radio was damaged, we would have to find our own way inside. Don't worry, said the old lady, we know someone who's very good at finding ways inside. Fuck yeah. Right, so you gotta turn this off for you, huh? For some reason, whilst I was inside these vents, my shoes refused to stick to anything. So, this one gets me here. Where do I need to go? I need to go press that button. Whoa. Okay. This was very strange. Everything almost looked like they were stage propped. Draw, uh, hmm. I see. So yellow should get me into a yellow thing, maybe. That drops me. Yeah, that's the one. I'm guessing. This one here, where does this one lead to? Oh, here we go. by the man in black and his friends before they whisked us away to show us the rest of the base although the buildings were clearly for military use we walked through huge hallways and galleries they really were the types of rooms you would expect to see in a five-star hotel or a beautiful palace I'm sorry your husband couldn't be here said the man in black Yes, said the old lady with a smile. I'm sure he would have enjoyed the adventure. Heather and Preston were just excited to be on the moon. But the scientists were confused as to why we were invited. Yes, why are we here, said the French doctor. Surely it wasn't merely to see your extravagant moon base. The man in black explained that once the war had escalated, he and his associates had tactically relocated to the moon. What associates? <clears throat> tactical people. Mates, said Mr. Preston. See, I told you, the Black Knight satellite, moon bases, JFK, it's all true. But Mr. Silton called him a <laughs> and told him to f off. Well, if you're going to keep a civilization alive, it's going to need its leaders, said the man in black. Come now, let me show you some more. We walked along tall metal gantries and through to another cavernous gallery. Its classical architecture made it look like some kind of grand museum. The man in black explained that when they had landed on the moon, they had crashed even worse than we did, and that they lost many valuable passengers. He was quiet for a moment, then he composed himself and continued. 
He explained that the only other shuttles they had were the one we arrived in and the small automated rocket that took their irradiated material out into space. Sim was impressed. So, nuclear powered then, he said with a knowing smile. Yes indeed, replied the man in black as he explained that the entire base was capable of containing a small country. Mr. Deck was also clearly impressed and said, I don't suppose you need a butler? Well, we used to have seven robots, said the man in black as he turned to me. He explained that. Now, I was the only robot on the moon after they had all the others removed. Come now, he said with a smile. You must all be tired. Let me show you to your rooms. I shared a room with Heather. It wasn't exactly nice, but at least the bunk beds were exciting. <laughs> Heather had fallen asleep by the time I'd looked around. After all, just like the man in black had said, we were all very tired. <laughs>